this is probably the best question q a i've ever done welcome landing crew to today's video today's video is going to be about alexander alexander is our four almost five year old we call him lex and this is going to be all about him and his signs of autism lex wanted to actually talk to his friends he said but while i was getting the camera ready this happened so he sends his regards from dream world and I'm just, I'm just gonna have to take care of it without it. We're going to be talking about his journey. <laughs> We're gonna be talking about why I thought he had autism, why I didn't, why both doctors decided that he did. We are gonna be talking about signs. So if you're clicking on this video because you have a child or you know a child that isn't showing more of the typical signs, but you still feel like there's something something extra going on, then this is the video for you. If you have a child that's showing more classic typical signs, I will leave the latest signs videos below for my two and a half year old and my 19 month old. This video is not to argue whether Lex is autistic or he's not. Uh, we've had him evaluated by two different doctors in two different states. They both agree along with all of his therapists that he is in fact on the spectrum. This video is to bring awareness, education, advocacy to the less obvious signs or the signs that may look a little bit different. We had Lex reevaluated so that we were sure that the autism label he had was in fact the correct one. Before we get going, let's do the disclaimer. Please do not use this video to diagnose your child. Your child can have some of these traits and not be autistic. They cannot have some of these traits and be autistic. Kids are sometimes kids that do weird things. Sometimes a child might be speech delayed. Sometimes a child might have sensory issues and it is not autism. Those things can happen without having an autism diagnosis. It is when you have a child that is having all of the issues at the same time, not the exact same time, but are all showing the same traits that then an autism diagnosis is, is more appropriate. This video is to advocate for early intervention awareness and showing how autism can look. Also, it's to answer a bunch of questions about Lex because of course I get a lot of questions about him and kind of how we were able to come to the conclusion of autism for him. Lex was my second autistic child. I have a 13 year old who is also autistic and our experience with him was different. He presented differently. His skill set was a lot lower. His cognitive skills were lower. Not to say he's not an amazing, amazing kid because he is. But when Lex came out, he didn't present like Noah did. He was meeting all of his milestones. He did have a few things looking back that I'm like, oh, that was kind of weird. Like I remember he wasn't very cuddly. He still isn't a very cuddly kid. Like I can get him to cuddle with me, but it's not something that he craves and wants. And then once he did start eating solid foods around 10 to 11 months, um, he did start to have issues with them. Like he would not eat pasta. He would like suck the sauce out of it, spit the pasta out. He was definitely a picky eater, but he was eating. It wasn't like with Penelope where she was like refusing food for such a long time. Like he was eating. He was just being very, very particular and what he did want to eat. He didn't want his food touching. He didn't want pasta. He didn't want anything squishy. But I know that a child can have sensory issues and not necessarily have autism. By 11 months, he was waving. By 13, he was bringing me a book. By 15 months, he had two to three words. So he was doing overall well. Was he exactly at age level? No, but I've talked about this before. Like not every child's gonna meet every single milestone when they're supposed to. And as a mom that already had an autistic child, I didn't see any red flags at that point. I thought everything was a-okay. I remember when he was about 16 or 17 months old, I actually have a video of this. When he was first starting to walk, Ashley brought over Sophie and he did great with her. He really didn't like want to interact with her. He kind of ignored her, but when she would approach him and things like that, he didn't seem upset about it. He wasn't trying to be mean to her. It seemed like a very typical interaction. So our regulars are already probably gonna know the story like the back of their hand, but basically when he was about 20 months old, I took him in for his 18 month appointment. And that's when they of course went through the MCAT and they were concerned with the fact that he didn't seem to have as much receptive and expressive language as he should at that age. They were also concerned with the sensory issues. And if I'm just being honest, I feel like when you bring in a child that's having delays in different areas and they have a brother that's autistic, I feel like doctors a lot of times are going to wanna really be proactive with that. And that's not a bad thing, 
but sometimes I think that that kind of kept me from 100% being able to evaluate the situation as a whole. So at that point, we started to get him into early intervention and that was great. Around 21, 22 months old is when we started to take him to church with my mother-in-law. He would go in the daycare and he would like hit, kick, bite. He couldn't interact and socialize with other kids his age appropriately. And needless to say, he was, he was, he was not welcome at the church daycare. Up until like 12, 13 months, he was a fantastic sleeper, which is kind of the pattern that all of my autistic kids have followed. Sleeping is perfect. Like they slept through the night at such a young age, like three or four weeks old. I never really had that hard newborn period. The only one I did was with Liam because he had medical issues going on. But other than that, like just wonderful sleepers. And then after their first birthday, sleep just starts to decline until they are complete insomniacs. And so that was kind of what was happening with Lex. And then at this time we lived in Jacksonville, we had our own place. Ashley would come up and bring Sophie. Sophie's about a year older than Lex, I think like a year and a few months, but they're round about the same age. He would just torment her when she was here, kind of like what he was doing in the daycare. We had the similar issues with Liam as he got older. We still have those issues. He just has a really hard time interacting with other children in his home, but it was really confusing. Like that alone says, okay, he's having socializing issues, but we would take him to the park and he was completely fine. He would walk up to these kids and once he was old enough to vocalize at this point he wasn't but once he was able to talk he'd be like want to play and so he would follow her he would be sweet to them and it was fine when he was in preschool which we'll get into he was fine so it was very confusing and it was not very consistent and that's kind of lex in a nutshell up until about two and a half he never had more than four functional words he would just kind of change them out so if he had bath, outside, ball, and go, which I think those were four of his at some time, he might lose like ball and buy and then have like play or something else. And they'd always be functional. He was never a child that like repeated what we said, but didn't really know how to use it functionally. That hardly ever happened. He really never babbled. He never, ever, ever babbled. Once he got closer to actually talking, he sometimes would, but it sounded more like conversational babble and not just randomly like trying to explore language. By the age two and a half, he had about 10 functional words, which was amazing but obviously way lower than what he needed to be at the age two and a half. And then about a month after that, he just woke up one day and started talking. He had early steps every week. She would come out to her home. And the next day she, after this happened, she came out and she was just flabbergasted. And that was so exciting to us. Like, I can't tell you the amount of joy that gave us. I never thought that he was gonna be nonverbal, but to finally have that language really explode in him at two and a half was amazing. I was so excited. But the issue was this is that even though his vocabulary was increasing, most of the time he wasn't able to use it in a fully functional way. For example, he could say yes or no, but if we asked him a question, he couldn't appropriately say yes or no functionally. So he would say yes to something he meant no and no to something he meant yes, and we still have that problem. He is getting a lot better about it now, but he's almost five. <laughs> Sometimes we, we have to reword the question to make sure he fully understands what we are asking. We've also learned that he picks up phrases that we've used. He does that a lot. He has always been really, really good at imitating. Like he would see a like firefighter show and then he would pretend to be a firefighter. He would watch Blippi and then he would pretend that the box was like part of the Blippi show. And so he was always really good with imitating, which everyone tells you that that's a clear sign of being a typical child. Like that's what you're supposed to do. I feel like up until the age of three, I was pretty sure that he wasn't on the spectrum. I was just kind of like, he just seems like a typical child. Like there's all these things that are going great for him. He did have significant sensory issues. That was so, so, so clear, but you can have a sensory issue and not be on the spectrum. By two, he knew how to work an iPad. By two and a half, he could do those full-fledged puzzles on the iPad. When he was two, we bought him a bunch of vacuums and brooms, like little playhouse stuff. He tr loved trying to copy me clean. And that's a typical thing. 
like he wanted to like push a baby in a stroller. Those seemed like very, very, very typical things, but that was the extent of his play. He didn't do anything else besides pretend to clean all day, which was kind of funny. He would sometimes play with blocks. He really didn't have much of an interest besides pretending to clean. And then he would play puzzles. And those were like his two things that he would just do a lot. To me, that didn't seem weird. I don't know. It didn't seem like a super weird thing to me because I felt like that was pretty pretty appropriate play for a two-year-old as opposed to Noah who wasn't even stacking blocks at two. So because of his imitation skills, his vocabulary grew and it grew very, very, very quickly. If you've been following us for a few years, I think we'll all agree that Lex's talking is just exploded. Like the fact that he actually did not start talking until he was two and a half years old and he's almost five and his vocabulary is where it is now is just absolutely amazing. He would be able to use these really like complex words for his age. But then the simpler phrases is what kind of made us think like something else was going on. If someone asked him how he was doing, he would say, my name is Lex. So he wouldn't answer it appropriately. It was almost like it was scripted. And he was still doing this at age four. It was at an age that he should have known the answer to these questions. He didn't know how old he was, even though we told him time and time again. If you said something to him, it would take him a really long time to respond, almost so long that you didn't think he was going to respond. And then he would respond and it would sound like a robot. So the example I use is I would be like, I love you, Lex. I would just think that he's not gonna respond to me. And like minutes later, he goes, I love you too, mommy. And so he would put a lot of space between his words. He doesn't do that anymore. Once he started talking, his path to talking was not the typical way. This is the difference between speech delay and autism or a language disorder is when a child is speech delayed, they're just later on talking. And then once they talk, they, they go the normal way in learning language and vocabulary and speech and all of that. But when you have a child that has a language disorder or a child that's on the spectrum, they're not following that. They, they might be really good in one area, but then extremely low in the other. So then it's the doctor's jobs to kind of figure out, okay, why is that gap there? Like what exactly is going on? Like he didn't know the answers to basic questions and he still doesn't. He has learned that if someone asks you how you're doing, it's always good. He never says anything else. So it's hard for him to free form answers to a lot of questions. Like when we ask him what he wants Santa to bring him for Christmas. Like he can't just free form off the top of his head. Oh, I want to switch. I want this. I want that. He then starts talking about Santa. He says, Santa brings presents. We kind of have to like talk to him and be like, well, what toys do you want? And then we're like, oh, do you want it to like write a letter to Santa to let Santa know? So we just kind of have to like change our conversation and adapt our conversation to him so that he is learning how to interact, but also including him like we don't want to just like not include him in these things like I want him to be excited about Santa because he loves Santa he thinks Santa's so cool so I know that if he could properly process the question we're asking he probably would be able to tell us oh I want this and that and this and that so we kind of want to adjust those 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 questions and and talk to him in a different way Lex didn't get any services at all until we moved here other than the once a month developmental therapy, but in Florida, early steps is, it's not what it is here. And I will be going over like his diagnosis and what therapies he's in and everything like that before I start talking about the questions because I did ask you guys questions on Instagram. So something else that really confused us is like, I remember at like 19, 20 months old, we would tell him to go throw away, the, away his diaper. And so he would pick up his diaper and go throw it away in the trash. So we figured he was understanding what we were saying. The same thing if he asked for a chocolate shake because he has to take pediatures because he's really very, very, very picky eater. And so we, we have to supplement part of his diet. And so he knows that there in the same fridge so he knows right where they're at this was something that came out on his recent autism evaluation was she asked if he could do that i was like oh yeah he can definitely do that she's like what if you told him to go get eggs out of the fridge could he do that and that made me think because i was like no like he couldn't and i tested it out and he he couldn't so it's things that are always in the same place 
that it's the same routine over and over and over he completely gets. Last summer, um, we did have him evaluated for autism. We already had to have Noah like reevaluated so we could get services, uh, but we were also having Liam evaluated as well. And so I figured to just go ahead and get him evaluated just so we could know one way or the other. I was really tired of the limbo. I was tired of one day being sure he wasn't on the spectrum, one day he was, and I just wanted an answer one way or the other. At this point, he was having sensory issues Issues. He's still speech delayed. Even though his language had improved a lot, it definitely was not appropriate age level. And there were just some things that were just kind of strange with how he was using his his vocabulary that just didn't seem like a typical way. So I figured if anything, even if he wasn't on the spectrum, she could kind of give me an idea of what was going on. His behavior issues had skyrocketed. He was having clear social problems. So when the doctor evaluated him, she noticed him stimming. She noticed social issues with not just like Lex and Liam because she was able to see them play but she also saw issues with her and Lex. She had pretended to like stub her toe. He really didn't care. Just a lot of social skills too like standing too close not really knowing those those social boundaries that are usually pretty innate into us. Not allowing others to take turns. He was very very rigid with the puzzle that they were doing. So there was just a few things that she's just like I really think that this this really could be autism, but I'm not 100% sure. He's not in an age where I could assess him at school or something like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and give him the diagnosis. She diagnosed him with autism, and then she also diagnosed him with combined type ADHD, and then told me to have him reevaluated in about a year. A few months after Lex was diagnosed by the doctor, he was also evaluated by the school in Florida, and that's when he was diagnosed with a language disorder. So at that point, we were just still kind of confused. Like, I feel like we were just still in this confused place. I'm like, okay, I have this child that for sure has sensory problems, for sure has ADHD, and for sure has a language disorder. Sometimes, his socializing would be fine. He was recently evaluated over the summer here in Colorado and she did not say that she was unsure. She said that it, it was very, very clear to her because of the fact that his cognitive skills and his skill set is a lot higher than what his adaptive skills are. And your adaptive skills are like day-to-day -day living and things like that. So I'm kind of making this video because I want others to be aware of how different it can look. It, it's not always clear cut. It can be kind of frustrating as a mom because like I wanted him to have the label if he was but not have it if he wasn't and so it was definitely a weird place to be in. Sometimes we think of autism and communication as nonverbal or we think of it as them repeating what we say but not being able to use it functionally. So that's kind of Liam, right? But for Lex, it looks like he is able to take phrases and script and take things we say. And most of the time it can sound functional. Sometimes it makes no sense. And we realize that that's just a phrase he's picked up and he just hasn't learned the meaning behind it. That's how Lex learns. Like some individuals on the spectrum are insanely good at imitating and learning how to use that in the real world. Lex does this thing still where if we say something, he repeats what we say. So it can look different. It can look like you're speech delayed or it can look like you just can't use your vocabulary functionally. Maybe they use really big words perfect. The simple things they can't figure out. That doesn't always mean autism. It doesn't. Sometimes children can just have like a language disorder or they can just be speech delayed or they can just struggle with XYZ. I'm making this video so others can be aware because guess what? If your child is behind on speech, if they are struggling with using language in the appropriate way, whether it's autism or something else, early intervention is so, so, so important. Stereotypically, <laughs> people associate social skill issues with autism with that they don't ever want anything to do with anyone else, that they avoid eye contact. But autism can also look like them wanting to, to socialize but not knowing how to do it appropriately. So they stand too close, they yell. It's wanting attention and wanting to spend time with someone and not knowing how and therefore they react in an aggressive way or a way that is not socially appropriate. So it can look that way as well. Alex has always been just a social butterfly. He 
we go to the store and he's just waving at everyone. He just loves everyone. And that's just who he is. He's never been a child that shied away from kids. Instead of shying, he's not able to engage and interact with them appropriately. The doctor said that she feels like home is his safe place and the place that he feels the most comfortable to be himself. So at school, he would probably burn himself out with trying to have appropriate behavior. And then at home, he would let go. When people come into his home, he doesn't feel like he has to act a certain way or be a certain way. And he just is who he is. In school, I'll be honest, it wasn't like he was really interacting with the kids. He just wasn't intentionally like, teasing them or being mean or hurting them or anything like that. Others might look at autism with stereotypical behaviors as a child that lines everything up. They might think it's with stimming is hand flapping. If you know our family, you know our youngest Penelope, she's the queen of stimming and she has a lot of the classic stereotypical stims, but Lex does not. To him, stimming is clicking his tongue. It's snapping his fingers. It's moving his fingers. It's it's jumping up and down. It's twirling constantly. It's chewing on things. So for him, it looks different and it can look different in any child. And those things I mentioned, I would never think anything of it. I didn't realize he was stimming, but it made sense because when I would really pay attention to him, he would always do it in situations where he was overly excited or he seemed very anxious and stressed out. For us, the most obvious parts of Lex's autism or him being autistic is definitely the communication piece, how he communicates with us and want how he tries to socialize and he wants to socialize so bad, but he doesn't know how to do so appropriately. That comes across probably the most obvious and that's what the doctor said too. She said it was very, very clear that he was trying to act a certain way and repeat things that he thought was what you were supposed to say instead of things that came naturally to him. I'm sure I left a million things out just because he is almost five and a lot has happened. So Lex's diagnosis is our autism level one. He's diagnosed with ADHD combined type and he does have two genetic abnormalities. I will be linking our most asked questions videos below. So if you just kind of want to know more about our family, if you're new here, if you're confused, any of that, I will link that. Lex's therapies that he is currently in is he is in ABA therapy 35 hours a week. He's in occupational therapy twice a week, 45 minutes. He's also in speech therapy twice a week as well. Speech and OT overlap with ABA. So it's not like he has 35 hours plus those. It all overlaps. It's just basically preschool for him. That's what they do. It works on his behaviors as well as Lex is also an escaper. In the description, there's going to be so many videos, but I'll link the video about the time that Lex escaped the house. We had to call the police, but he's also been a loper as well. That was something else that kind of made us think that other things were going on as at the age four to five, he should definitely be able to to understand danger. I mean, he just recently eloped the other day, but he will stay in ABA therapy until kindergarten. And then we'll kind of reassess if we want to keep him in it for like just a few hours a week. We are doing these therapies now so that he can be his best self in school and excel. We do plan to mainstream him. We have no intentions of trying to put him in like a special needs class or anything like that. I think Lex is going to just blossom in a typical setting and I think that's more appropriate for him. As I said, I asked you guys questions on Instagram. I asked it really late, so I didn't think I was gonna get many questions, but I have done these Q and A's on Instagram a lot. You guys asked some of the best questions. This is probably the best question Q and A I've ever done. Isha asked, how old was he when he started listening to instructions? So he was really young, as I said, if they were instructions like he knew, like if it was his diaper, he knew we always threw his diaper away after he was done with it. But as far as like listening to instructions now, that is still something that he really struggles with. He struggles with like the behind on the propositional phrases. That's something that speech is working on him with. I don't think that he can't listen to instructions because he doesn't have any receptive language. I think just 
he gets confused. I think it's just confusing for him. So we have to keep things very, very simple. And a lot of times we do have to like lead him by the hand and show him, oh, it's on top of there. So that way he's understanding them more and it is more time consuming, but I think in the end it's gonna be worth it because it's going to help him be able to prosper. Amanda asks how he's doing with eating. His eating's about the same. Some days are better than others. We just recently had a day where he felt really, really lethargic. We had to cancel th therapies on him because he just was not feeling good. He looked gray. It just wasn't good. Some days he's still just going through shakes. He does seem more apt to try foods. Like the other night he took a bite of my wing, which he's never done before. He didn't want any more after that, but I feel like he's opening himself up to try more foods. Last summer he was like 38 or 39 pounds and now he's like 38 and a half. So clearly he should weigh more more. He's really, really, really tall guys, <laughs> but he is having less lethargic days. So I do feel like since he started therapy, it's gotten better, but it's still a hit and miss. So we're still, we're still working on it. SVM asks, would losing his diagnosis make services therapies less available? No, it would not. So for occupational therapy, he gets that because he has specific milestone specific skills that is not age appropriate. He receives speech because his speech isn't where it should be. He receives ABA therapy, yes, because of the autism diagnosis, but here in Colorado, they will actually cover ABA therapy if you have a developmentally delayed diagnosis, which he also has that as well through the school. The same with the waiver, he would still get the waiver and all of that. So those are are very specific to, to what he needs, which I love. I don't think that you should get a therapy based on a diagnosis or not. There are plenty of kids out there that need behavioral therapy, that need OT, PT, speech, all of that, that may not have a diagnosis yet or ever. But Kaden asked, does therapy help with potty training? Yes, therapy can definitely help with potty training. But Kaden also asked, can you discuss potty training with autism? Is it harder since they have trouble communicating? It can have its struggles. Um, I'm not really going to discuss Lex's potty training because I feel like he's at an age that most kids are potty trained. So I feel like if I talked about it, it could be embarrassing for him when he's older. So I'm just going to say that um, I have done a couple potty training videos and I do want to do one in the future to kind of show different ways that potty training can be successful with autism. But as far as using my kids as examples, I don't really feel comfortable with that. Uh, Nikayla said, do you believe his autism will affect his future? I think autism is part of who he is. And so I think it will affect his future, but not in a bad way. I think it makes him an amazing, amazing kid. I love talking to him because he has not the most run of the mill responses that you would expect, but it makes it so cute and he's just amazing. I think of all four autistic kids that we have, I think he's going to be the most independent. And that's why we're doing these therapies with him. I would prefer for him to be in six to seven hours of ABA therapy where they work on his academics and they do a, like a preschool setting for him where it's going to set him up for his best chance at life than for us to just put him in a preschool that isn't going to adapt to that. Stephanie asked, is Lex's autism caused by a chromosomal disorder? We don't know that for sure, but we're gonna assume probably. <laughs> I carry both abnormalities. I have some autistic traits. I'm not saying that I, I'm autistic. I am being evaluated for those who wanna know. I, I am being evaluated, but I don't know for sure. And until I know for sure, I really don't wanna say one way or the other, but I do have traits. And then the four kids that are on the spectrum, they carry abnormalities as well. So I'm going to say it's probably a reasonable guess to say that is the cause of it. Michelle asked, does he play with older siblings or more with Nellie? So both. He loves Penelope. Like he loves making her laugh so, so, so much. He's so sweet to her. If she's crying, he'll go rub her head. But then he loves playing with Noah too. So Noah and Lex's relationship, I never thought this was gonna happen because they probably had the most strained relationship. It's kind of blossoming and it's very sweet to see because like Noah will sometimes be like, oh, I don't, I don't wanna play with them anymore but Lex is learning to accept that, which I think that's okay to, to accept that sometimes you're, you're gonna play with siblings or friends and then they're going to be done playing with you. It's definitely nice to see these, these sibling relationships kind of 
blossom. Mimi said, with the kids' dairy allergies, will y'all try a vegan restaurant? So none of us besides Liam has like a full on allergy to dairy. It's more sensitivity. Liam's allergy is actually getting better. Different video. We aren't opposed to trying a vegan restaurant. I just don't know that it's like on the top of our to-do list. Emily asked, <laughs> is he hard to raise? <laughs> That's such a loaded question. Like, no, yes. It's not hard to raise him. Being his mom is easy. He is cute. He's adorable. He's loving. Um, he just has a really hard time expressing himself sometimes. When he wants attention, he goes about it in the more aggressive hyperactivity way. When he has a lot of energy, he's he's learning to get it out through different ways, like jumping and things like that. But he's, he's still learning. He's still a little guy and he's doing absolutely amazing. I love spending time with him. I love it. I love when he just comes to talk to me. I love it when he comes and wants to like take turns on Mario with me, when he wants to play puzzles, when he wants to go outside. I love spending so much time with him because he is such an amazing, amazing, amazing kid. Uh, Betty asked, does he have sensory issues when he gets a haircut or, or just like big curls? We trim the front of his hair. I usually wait until it's, it's pretty like right there because I don't want to be trimming his hair like every other week. It grows really, really, really quickly. It is kind of a, <laughs> a thing to get him to allow me to cut the front of his hair. We've shown him pictures of short hair, long hair, his hair, his hair short. Like we've done in so many different ways because again, I don't think he fully understands like what yes or no means. So we've asked him and he's always an expressed that he just wants to keep his hair long. There are times he yells at us when we mention cutting it. So that's kind of what we've done for now. I think it looks adorable on him. It doesn't seem to bother him. The only thing that ever bothers him is if his bangs get too long. So we, we definitely try to keep those shorter and out of his face as much as possible. Grubbs asks, does he know that he has autism and does he understand it? We've told him and we are very open it. Like we are not hiding it from him, but I don't think he's old enough to even understand what what, what, what autism means, but we did this with Noah and it seemed to work the best as far as Noah understanding and accepting himself. I feel like growing up from a young age, knowing that you have this disorder that might make you react or act a little bit differently than other people. It helps you understand yourself better. It's not bad. It's just different. That's kind of what we plan to do with all of our, all of our kids that can understand it. That is it. I hope this answered everyone's questions. If you guys have any other specific questions, please let me know, but it is Sunday night. So I'm going to bed now. I hope you guys have yourself an amazing week this week. Lonnie starts work. So we're having to <laughs> kind of adjust back to something we haven't had to adjust to in like almost two years. So it's definitely a change, but we will get there. I, I will be vlogging. So you guys will get a vlog on Thursday and I hope to see you guys then. Where you move, make me blind. You will always be there. There's no doubt in my mind. You will always be there. Heading out to see ya and